And Stock South here with another episode of Millie's Itinerary. Let me think. I believe this is still 220. Let me look at my paperwork here. Hold on. Yep, 220 in the afternoon. It's lunchtime. Uh, this is segment three or C. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. The next in line, anyway. Okay, and what we're doing is, uh, so well, it's quite a chore to get a basset hound to decide to eat what you'd like her to eat. Right, okay. <laughs> Your dog, too? Okay. I had one dog, I swear you could feed him steel wool. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he'd, he'd think it was a treat, yeah. Roughage, right. Um, high in iron. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> neat old dog he was, too. Hey, well, well here we go. Uh, Millie's itinerary. Okay, and uh, again, lunchtime now. Sandy kept Millie's attention diverted while I poured a generous helping of kibble into the bottom of our hound's microwave-proof bowl. Uh, then I shredded some cheddar and mixed it with just a hint of Swiss. Swiss gets pretty sticky when you nuke it, you know, and so I poured the mixture right on top of the kibble. By the way, I didn't shred all the Swiss. I left some of it in slices. 30 seconds in the microwave had our cheese experiment all gooey and clinging like armor plate to the kibble. Oh, this plan was surefire. Next, we placed some chicken on top of the cheese, along with an old meatball and a tiny hunk of sausage from some leftover uh, spaghetti sauce that was in the fridge. As I crumbled a few Chinese noodles uh, on top for a topping, uh, I thought how this might not be such a bad meal for me some evening. All uh, Millie's uh, nail needed was a garnish of uh, chopped broccoli for color, and, well, that done, we were ready for the grand entrance. Uh, Millie was watching us with her head cocked. You know how dogs, yeah, yeah. With her head cocked to the right and her tongue hanging out, uh, she was sniffing the air. Uh, uh, I guess her, her nose was sniffing for kibble. I figured that for today, the kibble aroma was pretty much overwhelmed by the cheese. Our hopes were running high. Sandy and I took the food bowl out onto the deck. Millie licked her chops and followed us right away. Things were looking pretty good for the moment. When we can, we like to feed Millie out on the deck, you know, on a nice day. Uh, first, it's easier to clean up the meal if uh, we feed her outdoors. About all we have to do is uh, for the three of us to walk inside after the meal. Uh, within seconds, birds and squirrels uh, pounce on the leftovers like piranha fish. Uh, the, uh, we almost never have to sweep. Uh, sometimes, though, the wild animals leave the kibble, too. I don't know what it is about kibble. <laughs> anyway, second and perhaps the best reason of all is that uh, the aromas outdoors are so plentiful that they can sometimes, with luck, mask the kibble scent. Uh, last of all, if other animals like deer or neighboring dogs or maybe even a far-off bear are lurking outside, Millie eats faster. I guess, I'm guessing that it's a dog thing to eat, uh, eat the food uh, quickly before anyone else can get to it. No matter what the reason for eating outside, Sandy and I both remarked how it was such a pretty day. We even had said how it might be nice later on uh, to eat out here on the deck ourselves. For the record, later that night there was, uh, there was something good on TV, so we uh, had dinner in the living room. Uh, I spilled spaghetti sauce on the uh, that night, I spilled spaghetti sauce and a meatball on the rug. Millie got to it before I could. It, it was the last one on my plate, too. But thanks to Millie, I didn't have to scrub the rug. Okay. Well, there you go. Millie's itinerary. One more episode for you. Many, many more to go. We're not even two-thirds done. I know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that girl kept, keeps us busy. That's a fact. Anyway, so there you go. We'll see you later, friends. Go pet your dog. And God bless. Bye now.